this is what the morning's consisting of at the moment. The conveyor belt peeled itself on the wagon on the right hand side and it mixes better than the wagon on the left hand side so we took it completely off so that it can mix up the blend, feed it out and then we scoop it all up and put it in the wagon on the left hand side <laughs> and then go feed it with that wagon. Oh, what a farce. Just the blend looks very concentrated, but still it gets silage added to it. The tarmac silage pit that scrapes up beautifully, but definitely soon we'll be swapping over to the other feed wagon that's sitting in the field and getting the conveyor I was working on not that long ago and putting it on well swapping that wagon over but this wagon here on the right we're going to be swapping the two bottom augers out of, into it because the top augers are in good condition so we don't see the point in having to change it just yet um, but the bottom augers are definitely gubbed so I'm going to take them out and swap them with this wagons. The only reason we're doing all this is because this wagon here on the right has got a far better augers has got far better augers in it than the wagon on the left here it's just used for young stock whereas this wagon has got renewed flights a few years back which means that I can mix the minerals and all the concentrates we put in the wagon beautifully. So, uh, it is a bit of a, it is a bit of a bugger about doing all this, but at the end of the day, they've got to get their blend and it's got to be right. They are dairy cows, they're very sensitive beasts, unfortunately. <laughs> slight change in their diet can cause milk to fall off them which isn't any use. We need that stuff. It's what keeps the farm rotating. So I topped that wagon up with silage after I fed half the blend out and now he's feeding that out. Then it's to get scooped in and then that's to get scooped in there and then it's to get topped up and then the same again. <laughs> <laughs> Not ideal. However, it could be far worse. We could have no feed wagon. But we could just use the other feed wagon, but the blend wouldn't be as good. The milk would fall off them. Uh, we'd be done far quicker though, but that's not what we want to do because we know what would happen. Advantage to having two feed wagons there's always one spare. Scooped a bucket away at the back here so you could get the wagon down on the ground. Tractors up in the air there, look. Because <laughs> unfortunately, knee conveyor means it's not shoving it away from the door. Right under the wheels. And we need the conveyor because it lifts it up into the troughs. I think that should be a bit empty. Ideal. Right, let's get scooping. Right, second load, doing its thing. <laughs> it looks like one of the off-roaders that puts their cars up onto a rock for a good picture. Dad's made a start on the new feed wagon that's going to be getting used. So he's took the wee back off the bottom because we're going to take the two bottom augers out. Uh, I was spreading slurry yesterday, so this is what he was doing when I was doing that. So as you can see further in, so in here, 
they are fairly gubbed. So the ones in the other feed wagon are going to need swapped over. And this will be a uh, this will be the good feed wagon after that. The top augers. They're all really good, so I don't see the point in changing them until we have to. And then it means when it, it means when we do come to swapping the wagons over, it's not going to be as big a day. Just get these swapped out, and then hopefully it's going straight away. But we're also having to, because of the height of this wagon, Dad's want to take off this and put it on the axle of the current good feed wagon. Well, not so good feed wagon, it's a conveyor uh, peeled off, so there's a conveyor there. It just snapped straight in the middle, peeled completely off, and this was the frame we were left with. And the, uh, the old one, I ended up having to get cut off, the one before that, and the one that we ordered, it was taking too long to come, then we decided we are going to do this up. And we cancelled the order, so that because we didn't think we'd need it. And then the next thing, well, we do need it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, we'll get this sorted up, and it'll no matter. Hopefully, we'll get this done as soon as possible. So that'll be a big day on the cameras. Hopefully, <laughs> let's go see Mister Wobbly. There's been about three calves born since. We're in the calf shed here now. <laughs> well, Louise's gave him. <laughs> Louise's gave him a name, Chunky Boy. <laughs> we lummy next door's doing well too, but he's almost the height of the plastic already. He's in. <laughs> These individual pens have been great. Um, you can monitor each calf individually and make sure they're all doing well as they're growing. And Louise really likes them, but the only thing is, you do need to keep them all clean so she's pressure washing them every time after use before new calves go in them but I big chunky boy's doing well so so if you don't know the story of this calf it was a big lummy calf born a few days ago and it was on YouTube I put up I'm not sure how many of you would have seen it but the video will be linked very shortly and yeah if you want to watch it getting pulled out well there's the option there now Press that wee button right there. Go on. Press it. Have you pressed it yet? Go on. Press it. You know you want to. <laughs> <laughs>